Hello, students. Today, we're going to talk about archiving. And this is a very useful topic when you are a system administrator on really any kind of system, but you know, specifically to our Linux environment. And this will be important as you manage files at the command line. So file archiving is just when you need to organize or uh, consolidate many files into uh, one package, either for storing away in another location or perhaps for transmitting uh, in an efficient manner. So I am going to share my screen and we will begin our discussion. So in this chapter, we're going to, again, discuss how to uh, manage files, specifically packaged together for efficient storage or transmittal. So this topic of file archiving is used when you want to uh, put together uh, or store things in a, uh, a reasonable, intuitive manner. So just think of an occasion where you've uh, searched the web perhaps for a particular kind of software and would it make sense for the vendor to have you know, 65 files for you to download to get the entire package of software? It, it would be a pain in the neck. Uh, for one thing, and you could get confused and forget uh, one of the modules and, and then things would be uh, just not happy. So it makes a lot more sense to package that uh, software suite together into one archive. And when we use the term archive, there are two fundamental aspects, and these are both explored in uh, our chapter in our course. And typically, when we use just the word archive alone, we are talking about combining multiple files into one to eliminate overhead that would be part of the individual files and just to make things uh, slimmer, trimmer, easier to understand. But the second uh, component is compression. And that often accompanies an archive. And that is where we are making the files smaller by removing redundant information. So typically, when we package a big set of files together, uh, it gets to be, you know, a, a fairly large file size. So anytime we can reduce the size of that file, that is a good thing. And I'm sure that you've, uh, compress the size of images, for instance, so that they didn't take up uh, quite as much room on a USB stick. So let's talk first about compression. So compression is what it sounds like. We're reducing the amount of data that is stored in the particular file so that either it will move more quickly 
across our communication channel or take up less space on our storage media. And when we talk about compression, there is not just one right way to do it. It is effected through a mathematical algorithm. And the compression algorithm is the exact rubric or instructions or procedure that the computer uses to encode our original file into a smaller replica and so that later we can uncompress that file to get back the original or a reasonable facsimile thereof. Which brings us to the next topic. When we talk about compression, there are two types, lossless and lossy. And more or less, they are what they sound like. In lossless compression, no information is actually removed from the file. Now, data or bits of information may be removed because there may be repeating bits of information that we can then reconstruct exactly back into the original. In lossy compression, information might be removed from the file as it is reduced in size. So when we uncompress the file, this may result in something that is slightly different than the original. For instance, an image with two just subtly different shades of green in a field of uh, trees might be made smaller by treating those two shades as a single color. And often, if the image actually had a hundred or 150 shades of green, combining just two of them in one place and maybe two others somewhere else, the eye will not be able to pick up those subtle differences upon decompression of the file. So generally, human eyes and human ears don't notice slight imperfections in images and audio. And when they are, especially when they're happening in like real time, like a, a, a moving video or an audio presentation, um, our brains are uh, adept enough to sort of fill in little gaps and we just move on. So a uh, lossy compression often benefits uh, media presentation because it results in a far smaller file size and people can't really tell the difference between the perfect original and the version with slightly changed data. Most image formats, such as the GIF, GIF, the PNG, and JPEG, implement some kind of lossy compression. Some things, though, must remain uh, perfectly intact to uh, respect the sanctity of the data. Things like 
log files, uh, documents, software. These require lossless compression. So that is a little bit about uh, why we use archiving and how compression plays into uh, that file management. So in the Linux world, there are several tools to compress files. The most common that we're going to see is gzip. And here you can see on the screen a long listing, right? LS space dash L, and then uh, followed by the partial name of a file. And then that asterisk is a wildcard character, meaning and match anything after L-O-N-G-F-I-L-E. And we can see the long listing shows us just one file called longfile.txt and it's owned by the user sys admin of the same group name. Now we use the gzip command, gzip space, and then followed by the name of the file that we would like to compress. Immediately thereafter, a second long listing is effected. You can see that the original file is gone. And what we have in the directory is a new compressed file whose name has .gc appended to the end. You can see also that the original file had 66,540 bytes and the new file is a mere 341 bytes. The file was compressed using the gzip command with just the name of the file as an argument. Now we can also use the gzip command with a flag dash L. And this is a way to get uh, a listing or a little report uh, about the file. Now remember that if you are interested in any details about a command, go ahead and look at the man page. I put in man space gzip and I can learn that it is in section one of the manual page system, the general commands. The main use of this command is to just type the command. Lots and lots of different flags can be used and then one or more file names. Remember that dot, 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 or ellipses means I can repeat over and over again the argument before it. So let us go down a bit, and I can actually use the forward slash, right, and dash L to search for that dash L and just as forward slash by itself, we'll find the next occurrence. So here is the dash L that says for each compressed file, list the following things about that file. It's compressed size, it's uncompressed size, the ratio compression, and then the uncompressed name. The uncompressed size is given as minus one for files not in the gzip format. So, you know, some kind of error condition occurred. Um, 
So to get the uncompressed size for uh, that kind of a file, we get some a little bit of extra information on that. That's going to be beyond the scope of our discussion at this particular time. Really, we just wanted to find out about dash L, which is more or less just a little report about that compressed file. So we can see that in this example, we had very good uh, compression with a very high ratio. So compressed files can be restored to their original form or decompressed using either a, we call alias tool, gunzip, or really just the same gzip tool with a flag dash D. So we can actually uh, see in our command manual, there was information on G unzip. Some people pronounce it gun zip. Uh, or there is also G zip. And then there's the D flag all by itself there. All right, remember, always hit that man page as a go-to place to research information whenever you come up against a new command and you're not 100% sure what to do, do your research. Now we'll talk about the second component, archiving. And archiving is when basically when you coalesce multiple files together, but you may also compress them at the same time. And the traditional Unix tool or utility for archiving is called tar. And that goes way back to when archives were put on tape. So tape archive e, uh, resulted in a shortening tar. Okay, so tar has three modes that are helpful and you should become quite familiar with create, extract, and list. And the general form of using tar is just to type T-A-R, a space after that, a dash, and then multiple flags. Dash C is for create. Dash F is to tell tar where you want to save the created archive package. Okay, so anytime there's a dash F, tar expects after the next space, the name of the archive. So the F flag should always be at the far end of your command. And we will see that in multiple examples. In fact, here we have one example, tar dash CF, and then the name of the archive that we want our package stored in, it does not have to be named .tar, but it's in your best interest to use a naming convention that makes sense to you and to others, because people are going to be looking at these things, and it is good upon just a first glance to be able to 
have a very good guess as to what this file might be. And we're telling TAR to take every file in this directory that starts with A-L-P-H-A, -A, that asterisk again means then match anything after that. So we might have a bunch of files, alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, alpha four, whatever, and bundle all those up and make them into an archive named alpha underbar files dot tar. And we can see that the system has a new file, alpha underbar files dot tar, that is now 10,240 bytes and owned by the same user account we've been talking about, sysadmin. This collection is often given the term a tarball. So when you hear that terminology, you will not be thrown or distracted. You will understand it's just a tar archive or a tar package, which is a single file that happens to be a collection of many files. So tar by itself is a collection of files, but tarballs can also be compressed so that the file is easier to send across the media. So when you go to download it from a website, it doesn't take as long. Or if you want to store this archive on removable storage media, you can get more things to fit on the media. And one can archive it by using that same gzip compression utility, but also the capability is built into tar using another one of the flags and it's dash z. So when you see dash z as part of a tar command, you can discern figure out that the resulting archive is compressed. So here we have tar dash C, C for create, Z for compress with gzip, and F means the very next thing following is going to be the name of the archive then followed by a list of all the files that you want to put into the archive. There is an alternative compression algorithm called bzip2. And that algorithm uses a compression um, system called, that is the Burroughs Wheeler block sorting compression. That's just a little, you know, extra piece of information to know. As opposed to gzip, which uses what is called the lempful zip algorithm. You may be asked a question about either lempful zip for gzip, or the Burroughs Wheeler algorithm for BZ2. And again, just for our human beings' uh, ability to discern, use the uh, best practices of the industry, which is to name 
the file that gets archived in a way that helps you, a human being, to be able to tell what it's all about. And typically, TBZ is an extension that is used to tell it it's a tar with the Burroughs zip algorithm. Okay. Sometimes we might see it as uh, tar.bz, the same way that up here it's tar.gz. We can also find a report or a list of information about a tar archive. And, you know, it'd be so nice if it was dash L for list, but it's not. It's dash T. So think of it as table of contents. So given a tar archive, compressed or not, so just a dot TAR or a dot TAR dot GZ or a dot TAR dot BZ, you can see what's in it by using the dash T option. And here is an example. We can say tar, T for table of contents. The J indicates that it was decompressed with the uh, Burroughs Wheeler algorithm. And then the F means that the name of the archive follows. And this command would list the contents of that entire archive. Presumably, if you make an archive, then later on, you would want to extract from that archive. So you can extract an archive with the dash X option. And that extraction might also have along with it a decompression. So depending on whether it was with the gzip or the bzip2 compression algorithm, you would use the dash Z or dash J. Now I have uh, included in your resources a star student reference and we can open up and see that there is some uh, condensed information for you to talks about the features create list and extract with their appropriate flags with also some examples. And we talk also about the various compression algorithms. And then at the end, we have all the different options, all the different flags and their meanings. So TAR has many options. You can refer to the man page for all of them, but here are the main ones and it's a good go-to quick reference for you. There are some exercises with this particular unit. And in the first set of exercises, we refresh our minds about what is archiving and what is compressing. And there is a question. Consider a problem uh, that was part of a previous assignment. Now you may or may not have this file, but 
it asks, how can you find the phone numbers for Ace Electronics in a file named phone that contains a list of names and phone numbers? Well, if you don't have that file, we know quick ways we can mock things up, right? So how about we make a file named phone? And it's supposed to be names and phone numbers. So let's just uh, talk about uh, Busy B uh, Electronics. And maybe we'll have them pipe separated. And there were supposed to be phone numbers. So we'll just make up some. And there's Ace Electronics, and we'll make their phone number there, and we can have, uh, you know, Igby's uh, you won't be too creative in this manner. And that might be enough for our um, demonstration. So remember on the very last not line, we want to hit control D. Now we have a file named phone. There it is. And let's remind ourselves of the question, which is, how can we find the phone number of ACE in a file named phone that contains a list of just names and phone numbers? Well, uh, we have grep, right? So I could grep for ACE electronics in phone. And that would allow me to find that phone number. So that's one way. Uh, there's probably other ways that the same thing could be accomplished. Um, which command can we use to display the entire file in alpha order? Well, there is a command that will come across sort so we can look in the manual page for how that command works and just read all about it. Uh, so looks like we could just simply say sort, add options, but they're optional because there's a hard bracket around them, and then the name of a file. So uh, I could do it in dictionary order. Okay. Uh, let's give that a go. So I could do sort phone and gee, it looks like it's in dictionary order. So that wasn't too terribly difficult. How can you display the file without any adjacent duplicate lines? Well, I'm going to ask you to read that man page and you'll figure that out. And as well as how you can display it without any duplicate lines. There happens to be um, another command that I'm going to point you to called UNIQ or unique. And so read a little bit about that command as well. You're asked then to repeat this exercise after you've compressed phone into phone.gz. How could you answer the same questions? And don't overthink this. Don't uh, go off on too much of a tangent. 
the the main takeaway is there really in most cases isn't a great way to uh, answer these other questions because phone.gz is now not a plain text file any longer. And most of the tools that we've spoken about, grep, sort, unique, they are meant to work on ASCII text files. So you can just think about that one a little bit. To answer exercise two, you need to hearken back to what it means to be compressed. What does it mean to compress something? It means taking out extraneous or repeating information, okay? So as I mentioned previously, an image file that has lots of very similar colors in that file may be able to be compressed, you know, quite a bit. Think about if, it, if they're all almost the same color, how much could that be compressed? So the more similarities there are in a file, the more and better the compression works. The more distinct the elements in a file are, the less it is able to be compressed. I think that will conclude our discussion of archiving for now. Uh, practice, practice, practice and hit those man pages in order to work out any questions that you have on the topic. Thanks for your attention and have a lot of fun. <laughs>